Part two of this presentation is going to deal with our two artists that we're going to be looking at for inspiration in terms of how they use uh, still lifes to convey ideas. Some more complex than others, but that's the idea, right? Okay, so once again, we're starting here with our learning target. So you can see, just as a reminder again, what it is that we're going to be looking at. So our first artist is going to be Janet Fish. Here you can see some inf information about her when she was born, uh, where she was working, and where she went to work, and what she is known for. So as we look through her still life uh, drawings and paintings, make sure that you look for those realistic still life images as well as her rich colors. First of all, with Janet Fish, one of the things that she's really known for is her manipulation of different types of materials. So that's something that she does really well and she utilizes in all of her still lifes is our different materials. So not everything is going to be very transparent. Not everything is going to be uh, solid. So she utilizes textures, for example, you, you start to look at the textures in the plants, you look at the texture in the cellophane, you look at the transparency of the Windex bottle, as well as the opaqueness of the coffee. The uh, feather duster in here, the use of text in the backgrounds, um, as well as complicated background patterns uh, with values and whatnot. So that's one of the things that she does. Make sure that you pay attention to why she's doing this. What could she potentially be doing or trying to communicate through this collection of objects? Yes, she does work thematic. Here, one of the easy things about this is taking a look at the kinds of colors that she's using. So they're very rich, they're very vibrant, but there's also a very specific relationship between these colors. So which colors do, I ident do you identify? At this point, yeah, there should be some red yellow as well as blue. That says a little something about uh, these objects as well as who these objects are for. So while we're looking at this, um, can you identify the theme? Well, to identify the theme, let's take a look at our objects. We have here a cup, we have candles, we have candy in a bowl, and this, have you figured out what that is? Okay, that's going to be very important to, um, in terms of what this theme is. By now, you've identified it's a kind of party, right? Specifically, maybe a birthday party. Okay, for who? Is it going to be for someone like me? Probably not. Okay, probably somebody much younger, like maybe one of my kids. Okay, so yes, this is more for a children's birthday party. So here you can see that the theme is really a child's birthday party. Um, and this object right here, that is a bouncy ball. So let's move on to our next artist. Uh, Next artist is Audrey Flack. <clears throat> Audrey Flack, again, uh, born 1931, working in uh, New York, and she's worked all over the place, just like uh, Janet Fish. Both of them at one point were actually at universities working as uh, painting professors and whatnot. Both still continue to give certain lectures every once in a while, um, but Audrey is, just like Janet, is known for her realistic still life paintings. But she also uses very rich colors, and she uses symbolism much more than Janet does. Here we could see how Audrey is utilizing that symbolism. So, taking a look at all the all the images that we have in here, you start to notice that she is actually telling a story. Now, she gives us a lot of visual clues because of the material she is using. So, take a look at this. What kind of materials are you are you identifying? Who would be using these materials? Why would they be using these materials? The title of the piece gives us a huge hint as to the nature of the person who owns these materials. Okay? So that's something that we need to consider. Now, another thing to look at is talk about symbolism. Audrey is using symbolic fruits um, and natural objects in some of her still lifes to, come to further advance her idea. That's something that a lot of the Renaissance and Baroque artists did in their still lifes. That's something that she's carrying on in hers, even though it's many, many, many years later. In her next piece, uh, we look at a very specific person being talked about. So there is a hint to this here with the name of the piece that relates to the person who is in it. Okay, We also are given a clue as to what this piece is about in relationship to this person by using the term vanitas. In presentation number one, remember, we were talking about some kind of commentary on the meaninglessness of worldly objects as well as a uh, kind of a, like a talking about people's life and death. So, taking a look at that, who is this about? 
Well, if you guessed Marilyn Monroe, you're on the right track. Before Marilyn Monroe became Marilyn Monroe, she was Norma Jean. And so here we see a portrait of Norma Jean as, as she was before, right here. Okay, and you start to identify different kinds of objects that are used to talk about her, you know, transition from a brunette as Norma Jean to the blonde bombshell we know as Marilyn Monroe. And you start to look at a lot of the opulent objects that are in here. We, we see um, objects that depict time, talking about almost in reference to Marilyn's death at, at a very early age. You know, some have interpreted the candle as you know, her light being distinguished before it, before its time, okay? How time stopped, you know, the egg timer is laying down. So there is still time left, but it's no longer moving, okay? And once again, the representation of the fruits that we see in terms of the pears, uh, the apricot, the orange, and uh, the grapes, all those things are very symbolic. This piece here, in terms of the symbolism that she's using, one of the things when we look about uh, when we look at this is we notice that it's queen. So she's using that to represent somebody who's very important to her. So who might be the queen in her life? That's something we need to ask ourselves because she gives us a lot of clues. Okay, we start to look at, for example, the repetition of this object here, which is a queen from a chessboard, as well as the queen of hearts. Okay. Uh, we start to look at other objects in here that relate back to the person that she's referring to. Okay, the person she's referring to is actually pictured right next to her. So this is the person. That, this is the queen, and this is Audrey. So who might this be? Who might be her queen? After reflection, if you thought that maybe it's her mother or grandmother, you are correct. It is actually her mother. Okay, you can also even see here the use of this. F, which is indicative of the person, okay? So, last name, Flack, okay? Her mother enjoyed gambling, hence we see like a roulette ball. We see a card from a card game, as well as we start to see, you know, the game of chance with chess and, or not chance, excuse me, strategy. And then we see time, how much time she spent. As well as the rose that represents, you know, the love that she has for her mom. I also believe, and I'd have to look this up again, I apologize, um, that her mother's name is actually, in fact, Rose. Now, now, based on everything that we've seen so far from Audrey and looking at this piece, okay, can you identify a common theme throughout Aubrey's work? Why is there a skull in the middle of this, of this piece? What does it mean? What does it reflect? Why are we looking at this? Why is she presenting this to us? Okay. Take a look at, for example, the title of Wheel of Fortune. These are all hints. These are all clues as to what Aubrey is trying to tell us. Why she's using these specific objects. All of this correlates back to one idea. So I'm not going to talk about this piece. I'm going to ask you to actually investigate it on your own. Take a look. Come up with some ideas, some theories first. Then look it up and see how did you do. What did you say? And feel free to check on some of the other stuff that I've mentioned in these in this presentation about what these pieces are. If I got something wrong or misremembered something, hey, let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Okay? All right. So we're going to move on to part three right after this video.